a bit challenging thing to be the last presenter in a conference. So I appreciate your attention. So uh, uh, also, it's a quite challenging thing to present uh, uh, this kind of uh, research, which is haven't finished yet. Uh, so what I'm going to present today is just only the simulation part. So there is no any practical measurement behind it. Uh, but uh, we got some interesting result. So when we would like to continue it uh, with the practical size and see whether the simulation and measurement are going to give you the same result. So what is uh, going to be presented today? So uh, uh, what we, so always uh, lots of things start with an idea. So also that was the, that was an idea which uh, was about uh, let's uh, combine water mist system and sprinkler system and maybe uh, by the end we will have a more efficient fire extinguishing equipment if we combine those two uh, systems. So we know that uh, sprinkler and water mist system works in totally different ways. So uh, the size of the sprinkler is around one millimeter, the average size, and the size of the, uh, of the, of the um, water mist system, uh, let's say 99% of the droplets is less than one millimeter. So when we started the simulation, we didn't even know whether it's possible to simulate it or we got a realistic result by using FDS. But we've got some result finally. So uh, we made uh, a real size uh, test model. The reason we made that because this is a real building when uh, this kind of measurements is going on. So then later on uh, <clears throat> in this building, uh, we can uh, make the uh, practical measurement also. So, um, uh, so there is a size of the building. I don't want to tell you the real size because it's not, maybe not as important. But in uh, 1.5 meter uh, height, we put a one meter by one meter shelf element. Uh, and uh, uh, there was two sets of simulation. One set of simulation was with fire and another set of simulation was with have some fire. So you can see here the, uh, the place of the fire and you can see here the place of the sprinkler and the water mist heads, which was placed symmetrical in the model. So <clears throat> um, maybe some introductory word. So uh, between the two methods, the most important difference are the rate of the flow, the size of the water droplets, and the distribution. So um, uh, yes, I, I told the other couple of uh, sentences. So, um, uh, according to uh, the extinguishing efficiency, the size, the flux density, the angle, and the momentum of the spray is quite important. So then, of course, those parameters has to be set uh, properly uh, during the simulation. So when, what is the problem with the uh, water mist droplets? The, the problem with the water mist droplets, the fire uh, generates a huge buoyancy uh, as a fire plume. Uh, what we find it was, uh, I guess, one megawatts fire, and it generated an around 10 meter over second uh, velocity plume velocity. Uh, that against uh, the, uh, of course, the uh, mist uh, droplets, which has around 0 0.5 one meter over second velocity, and it's a very light. Uh, droplets. So, uh, if uh, uh, the uh, uh, if we have like that, maybe the droplet cannot go closer to the fire. And because the uh, the uh, in the water mist system, uh, the uh, main idea is uh, the evaporation. So uh, the we have to evaporate the water droplets, and that evaporation can happen when it's go, go closer to the fire source. Then. If uh, the water droplet cannot go closer to the fire uh, source, then it cannot be evaporated, then it cannot then extinguish the fire. So that was, that is one of the main problems. So this is this test side. Uh, we, um, in the, during the simulation, uh, we made uh, different size of grid uh, depends on the area in order to speed the simulation up. So it goes from five centimeters to 20 centimeters so altogether we have uh, 400,000 cells. 
So um, let's see the first uh, result of the simulation. As uh, you've seen previously, there were basically two, uh, four, four heads, sorry. Uh, and uh, uh, one part of the simulation, we used just only the sprinkler heads. And another part of the simulation, we used only the uh, water mist head. And then we combined them. Finally, we had four different cases. So uh, um, let's see some result with, uh, without the fire. So you see the cases. There was two symmetrical cases. And, uh, when exactly the uh, water mist and sprinkler head was above the uh, uh, test case, and there was non-symmetrical cases, and also there was finally a symmetrical case when we have four heads, and these are the results. And what we've uh, what we've investigated was the, for instance, the velocity under that uh, investigation area, so which was uh, 1.4 meter uh, height. So we just simple uh, uh, took a look of the velocity distribution. So it's a scalar value, not a vector value, as you can see here. So in this arrangement, a sprinkler and water mist head was placed over the shelf element. So in inserting more and more number of heads in the model results a quicker going, a growing velocity field and more balanced or more uniform velocity under the tray, So which means if it's, we have more and more balanced velocity under the tray, maybe the uh, efficiency of the extinguishing is more and more efficient. So in the next set of cases, uh, uh, we made a fire, which was, as mentioned, uh, um, um, a hepham fire around one megawatt. And of course, uh, uh, based, based on that, there is a plum developing here. So you see, uh, here is the, here's the fire source, the plum comes the other side uh, of the shelf element, that sprinkler is here. So you see uh, it's uh, quite interesting that uh, the plum is uh, uh, affected by the sprinkler. You see that we have uh, around 10 meter of a second velocity of the plum and around uh, the uh, shelf uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 meter of a second velocity of the sprinkler and the temperature on the tray because of the cooling effect was around 80 Celsius centigrade. So in the second arrangement, uh, we did the same thing with the water mist. So not sprinkler had water mist, as you see. Uh, if we compare uh, with the previous case, you can see that there is no such a plume was it before. So it works a little bit differently. Uh, but uh, we can state that uh, because of the plume, the uh, so the, uh, most of the particles uh, cannot go closer to the, uh, to the fire. And uh, in this case, there were two heads uh, open, or two heads on, uh, sprinkler and water mist head, uh, which was a non-symmetrical case. And finally, that was a symmetrical case when four heads was uh, on, two sprinkler heads and two water mist head, and uh, maybe I summarize later the results or the conclusion. So uh, the plume generated by the fire significantly modifies the water mist field, uh, which means uh, it sometimes against extinguishing the fire. And what we realize that the asymmetrical case, or sorry, the symmetrical case is uh, preferable. I will show you the last picture here. So you see uh, the, this is the uh, velocity field of, um, uh, of the uh, water mist. And you see it has a certain angle. And that effect is uh, a little bit bigger if we uh, turn also the sprinkler heads on. So what, what could be the, uh, the uh, uh, description of that? So uh, because, uh, for instance, the, if we open the sprinkler heads, it generates uh, uh, um, like um, a free jet. And we know that in the free jet, uh, there is a negative uh, pressure force. And if we place symmetrically, of course, you see the angle helps to, uh, helps, uh, to the droplets to go closer and closer to, to, the, um, uh, to the fire source. So thank you very much for the attention.
Some questions? Hi. Uh, I was actually just curious if you could go back to some of the slides and describe which one was the sprinkler and which one was the uh, water mist. Uh, in my experience, typically water mists are volumetric filling, and one of those, so both it, of them looked very similar. Yes, uh, it's a symmetrical, so uh, I cannot see, but uh, the two in pair is a sprinkler, and the two other pair is the water mist. So it's perfectly symmetrical. It's a, yeah, it's a, yes. Hmm? Like the, like, uh, with the yes. Well, this is the sprinkler and this is the water mist. So it, you can see it has more subheads. That's why it's, uh, it's like that. Okay. Other questions? I'm curious how you modeled the water mist, the spray, and how you checked it. How, how do you know you're getting the, the right spray conditions? For example, velocities and trained air. Yes, so I, I set all the, all the values like velocity and the distribution. So I used the, I used the distribution what measured by uh, one of the companies. Uh, so it was published, uh, the, the medium size and the distribution factors. For, for the droplet size, but um, in FDS you obviously had to choose um, spray angles and so yes, forth. Yes, also that was that was from here. You can see uh, it was yes, it was chosen the angle and so okay. on. So, w were there measurements made of? Yes, it was based on the measurement. No, no, no. I'm saying, but uh, when you when you uh, activate the mist nozzle, did you measure the velocity of the? Entrained air or the velocity of the droplets? Yes. So? Yes, it was measured. Yep, well, not measured, but uh, I put uh, horizontal and vertical uh, slides of, uh, of the. Right, but the did, you, did you compare the FDS simulation with the measurements no, of the as, flow conditions? As I, as I mentioned okay. uh, in the couple of first words, it's just the first part of that okay. project. Right. That the reason we made that. Uh, uh, that real um, size uh, simulation case because it's a real building where we'll be, okay. but it's not done yet, oh, unfortunately. Okay. All right, thank you. Other questions? Uh, what was the initial speed of your missed droplets? Um, uh, as far as I remember, uh, around 100, but I, I don't remember exactly. I'm sorry, it's a good question, but <laughs> I don't remember. But it also it was based on the measurements. So we got the data sheet of the uh, of the uh, head, and uh, and we set all the parameter based on that. More questions? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much.